Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining Crosscut Asia Delicious Online Film Festival Online Talk Session. I am Ishizaka Kenji. Um, I am a senior programmer uh, at Op uh, Tokyo International Film Festival, and I am MC for this session. An English Japanese interpreter is Matsushita Yumi. Crosscut Asia Delicious Online Film Festival is held on a special website from 21st of January till 3rd of February co-organized by the Japan Foundation Asia Center and Tokyo International Film Festival. Launched as a section of Tokyo International Film Festival in 2014, Crosscut Asia showcased diverse Southeast Asian films with a focus on different aspects for six years until 2019. It returns here in a special two-part online version. Crosscut Asia Special Edition featuring delicious films from Asia and Encore Crosscut Asia. Total of 13 films from the two parts will be screened free of charge. We will host online talks with directors from five films from this special edition featuring delicious films from Asia. Online talk sessions will provide valuable opportunities to hear the voices of the directors directly. Um, we hope many of you who have watched the films online will join us. Of course, those who haven't seen the films are welcome as well. But please be aware that there might be some spoilers. Now let's invite our guest. Today's film is a a uh, film uh, from 2019, uh, Kanpai Sake Sisters. Please welcome director uh, Konishi Mirai. Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. You are in LA, I understand. Yes, um, that's right. I was meaning to return to Japan, um, but, uh, well, the situation isn't uh, very good, so I'm here, uh, remaining here in the U.S. Well, yes, uh, please stay safe, stay uh, well. Okay, so uh, with this talk session, so it's two of us speaking uh, in Japanese, but we have uh, viewers. We understand that there are people uh, from different places that are watching and listening to this talk. So this uh, film, uh, Kampai Sake Sisters, as a series, this is the second uh, film of yours, uh, the former being Kampai for the love of sake. And uh, so you, this will continue as a series? Is that the idea? Well, originally, when I first made a film, I, well, I didn't, it wasn't my idea, but uh, uh, when I worked on the first one, I was basically ignorant or, uh, you know, totally unaware uh, of the world of Nihonshu Japanese sake. And I featured three uh, personnel, and uh, when I followed these three protagonists, and uh, I met many others, acquaintances, and, you know, one thing led to another, and I encountered so many attractive uh, personalities. So, you know, the, the deeper I, I dig in, um, the more I dug, I, I, you know, but the thing is, um, you lose focus if you throw in many, um, say, characters in one film. So I really had to, you know, make my decision so, um, to draw a line. But then I was hoping to make the uh, big part two. And uh, uh, fortunately, my first film was well received. So I, uh, yeah, started planning a uh, sort of second film, or the part two, if you may. Um, so three personnel for each film. So you featured six um, 
individuals, but there are many other uh, attractive uh, characters out there in this world. That's right. So, um, pre-pandemic uh, time, uh, I actually launched on you know, the, the preparation for the third segment. Uh, but that uh, is only possible if I could travel to uh, different locations. So that's why I am. Um, it's that you know the project is put on hold. But um, uh, in Asian countries, uh, if there are people who find this film interesting, then yeah, I would uh, hope to yes pursue this uh, project. So um, you always like sake. Well, I love wine and beer, but Japanese sake, I didn't have good experience. Meaning, um, well, I've been living in LA, and uh, whenever I visit Japanese restaurants, they, you know, have, uh, you know, uh, Japanese sake on offer, and uh, so it's available, and I visit with American friends, and they say, wow, why don't you have Japanese sake? That's what my American friends say. But I never actually, you know, enjoyed or, had, you know, had good sake, like pure rice, jumai sake. You know, I, I was quite uh, yeah, unaware, and I just was not uh, familiar. So at some point, I wanted to find out and learn more about uh, Japanese sake. And I've been wanting to uh, shoot a documentary film. Uh, it's, you know, from for different uh, reasons. So I thought I could uh, select it, you know, I could pick it as a theme. So this is like, it's maybe not genuine, but I thought, you know, I can combine two interests and, you know, uh, deal with it in one go. So I didn't know of any good sake prior to making uh, my first film. I see. Okay, so you started from scratch and um, you encountered good sake. How did that happen? Yes, because I didn't know good Japanese sake, so I couldn't really make film based on the, the good sake. So at first, without knowing Japanese sake, say, well, I live outside of Japan and... Uh, you know, it's difficult living outside of a, you know, country. So something traditional Japanese and so non-Japanese who, you know, are sort of, uh, you know, uh, endeavored and sort of venture into this, uh, the world of Japanese sake, a very traditional world. That's why, you know, so there is uh, Kuji. Uh, he is a, uh, you know, a brewer owner of Nambu Bijin, fifth generation. He's Japanese, but uh, he is actually... Uh, uh, venturing into a uh, market outside of Japan. So he's quite an outsider. And the two others are non-Japanese, uh, you know, um, say, you know, enter this world as non-Japanese. So I, you know, really beg them, I am an amateur, but, you know, allow me to, 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 to you know, um, to, to make this film. So I spend a lot of time with them. And uh, I, you know, had an opportunity to say, savor this sake. And I had, I was, you know, it was daunting. What if I didn't really like their sake? Do I have to lie to them and appear as though I like their sake? So uh, I started off with Mr. Philip Harper, Kinoshita uh, Shuzo uh, Brewer, and uh, in Tam Tamagawa, it's called. Um, so I've done some tasting and I really got hooked. Oh, there's such good sake, such tasty sake. I was immensely moved. Um, then I really, you know, got really trapped in this world. So um, for those who like uh, Japanese sake, uh, the, the Tamagawa is, his sake is, I would call it perversion. Um, it, the, the trend is that, you know, easy to drink, uh, you know, uh, pleasant to drink, but this is really heavy. The, the color is even yellowish, it's not transparent. So, um, it was really a sort of a, uh, I call it perversion or deviant sake. So when that, that was being the encounter or awakening, you know, I had to then struggle to get used to other sake as well. I see. So for your, your second film, uh, so without any uh, preconceived ideas, um, 
So I, I do feel that、uh, you know you jumped into this world without knowing, so it's very impure.、Uh, but then now you learn something, you already have experience, and then、um, you launched on you know a、uh, second film. So it's a different situation. And the first、uh, film is in a way male version, and the second one is like fem- episode with females. So what did you have in mind prior to making the second film? Well, as opposed to first film, I want. I wanted to make a better film. I wanted to make an improvement.、Um, say, for me,、um, Philip Harper's encounter with him was really everything. And he wasn't keen to be filmed. He actually declined my offer. So, being non Japanese and、um, being a brewer of Japanese sake, you know, he's already sick and tired of typical、um, coverage in Japan. Oh, you know, you are. This kind of infotainment program, they say, oh, my, you are in a non Japanese and you got into this world and you know, introducing this beautiful Japanese tradition. That's how they want to, you know,、um, file the story. So he had enough of it. He didn't want to do any more of media coverage or shooting. So I had to convince him. So I told him that I don't get in his way、um, and not to have, you know, all the, 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 the crew. And, you know, he was made to repeat this action you know, many times. So I, I am not going to tell him to do anything. And I will be the only crew, you know, one and only.、Uh, no more.、Uh, just me. So I've directed in the past, but I never actually filmed with camera. So, I had to, you know, actually, you know, be, be a, a DOP myself. So, I, there's a lot I had to reflect because there's things I wanted to do, but I couldn't. But now that based on that experience, I, I, I knew that I can make a better film. And I understood about the process of sake making. So, I can foresee what's going to happen, you know, because I knew the movement. I can predict. So, I knew where to stand to, 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 to film. So, I knew that I can make better film from that perspective. Another The thing is that.、Um, Uh, so, the first film was about non Japanese, and、uh, with this film, so women also have been outsider in the world of sake making.、Um, so, the women are really, you know,、um, creating this movement. So, I thought it's a good angle. So, to combine, combine it,、uh, I thought it's a new,、uh, refreshing approach. So, it was quite exciting for me. And at the same time, As a filmmaker, again, I, was, I told myself, there was a, like a, like a beautiful or good looking blah blah. It's a very male point of view, a beautiful brewer or whatever. It's a very much like you know, middle aged man、uh, centered point of view. I really wanted to avoid that. So it's something that, say, female、uh, viewers can be inspired. That's something I wanted to create. But I am a man, so、um, being a male, I couldn't really check myself you know, whether it's going okay or not. So I, so someone I, I, you know, I got sort of a,、uh, the third person,、uh, say, a、uh, feedback from someone I trust. So it was intuitive with the first film, but the second,、uh, with this film, I wasn't sure if I can trust my instinct or in, intuition. So that, that was a daunting aspect of it. Well, the three、uh, characters in true sense, they are really are radiating、uh, in true sense.、Um, uh, that's what's conveyed from this, you know, I mean, film conveyed,、uh, you know, how radiant they are. So, you know, it can be a violent act to, you know, point camera to film someone. So that's another discussion.、Um, but、uh, say, Uh, non Japanese being、uh, Toji or、uh, Sake Master Brewer. So they often say, like, a, you know, pretty or beautiful,、uh, you know, Japanese in、uh, keeper or, you know, the manager. So you are very careful to avoid that kind of typical, in a way, the、uh, sexist、um, view.、Um, yes, and I often、uh, being interviewed、uh, myself. So How to film, and、uh, so what it is, you know the story. They, they already have a story, and they want to just, you know, they, they, they without even before filming, 
It's not that. It's not something spontaneous, not the pure, genuine uh, documentary. They already come up with a story. They know how they want to film the story, how to, to find the story. So it's already written. It's already, you know, it's like a, a done deal. And you feel so powerless. Um, so, um, so first and both second film, say non-Japanese uh, brewer is this and that, or second film, female uh, are this and that, not to, not to come up with a kind of, uh, you know, uh, judgment. Uh, not to not to yes be sort of uh, pre prejudiced in any way. I was very much open. That's what I told myself, and that is what was struggling. What was a, a, con a conflict for me? Uh, Imada Miho, she's a uh, master brewer. She is in this very male-oriented world, and. So I was, you know, she was, uh, uh, you know, cast aside and she still, you know, held on, endured. So that kind of hardship, I, that's what I wanted to hear, I must say. But none of that. Uh, she met many people and, you know, she was given opportunities and she received valuable advice. And so none of those, you know, tiresome hardship talks. She was very grateful. So I, I, you know, when I was editing, like, what do I do? Because I cannot find, you know, write my story. But that's a truth, you know, that's a truth. And uh, I shouldn't, shouldn't manipulate it in any way. So I kept it as is. So the, the film, often protagonists, you know, go through, hardship and you know already down to the bottom and then you know the, lot, there's a losing and then climbing up the ladder try to recover but then I try to stay away from that kind of uh, you know uh, formula so, but then I, it, it is something I could reflect on. But people who saw it, you know, they, they, no one really bothered. That's not really, it doesn't bother viewers. Some even said that, you know, the second film is actually a better story-wise. So, you know, trying to manipulate or have some kind of a prejudgment, uh, that, that is no good. Just, you know, as long as you have good characters, just let them lead the story. That's what I uh, learned. Yes, right. Documentaries, um, even more so than drama, um, it is about encounter with a subject. That's what it's often said. But with this film, uh, so uh, you have another person you worked with. Uh, yes, uh, with the interview. Yes, so it's not just me alone. Uh, because we had extensive interviews. So when, we, when I interviewed the protagonist, um, three uh, women, three, you know, uh, individuals, then I had professional came in, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a, a DOP. Uh, so the, the professional, uh, you know, uh, DOP uh, has done it. Other than that, I did everything myself. I even flew drone myself. So, director, you know, there are directors who also DOP, um, say, with documentary, Hara Kazuo, you know, he is rolling camera, and Wan Bin as well. Um, and when I, like Mr. Hara saying that, oh, it's about, you know, being, uh, you, know, ref, uh, you know, it's about reflex. You have to, you know, be agile, you know, so you need to react. That's the, that's the thing about uh, a director also being, uh, you know, the, the, you know uh, being a, 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 like DOP at the same time. So it can be risky, but, you know, it's also, you know, exciting. And I would say the uh, disadvantage is your, uh, you know, physical condition directly reflects um, the performance. So when you're tired, so when I was tired, you know, I tend to make mistakes. I, you know, I, you know, it was a good visual, but, you know, the, the microphone wasn't so turned on. So, you know, I didn't, uh, yeah, turn on the switch or... But the benefit being that the biggest benefit is that camera is small and uh, so the subject uh, is not that prepared. Um, say, it's as though we're just standing, you know, chatting. That's the, you know, uh, the, the atmosphere we could create. When there's a the, the director and there's a DOP with big camera, then the subject, uh, you know, interviewee tend to 
be very uh, conscious. But me with small camera, so, uh, you know, my subject uh, was being very much herself. Um, so that really was the benefit, I would say. I see. So, uh, three women. Uh, how did you meet them? In what order? And um, you shot them parallel, parallel, parallel at the same time. I mean, it was all juxtaposed because you know. I mean, it's like not. It's not an omnibus film, like first person, second person, third person. But it is like a drawing and a you know a circle. So, in what order uh, did you uh, film? I met uh, Chiba Marie first. Uh, Marie, you know, she owns a restaurant. And when I shot my first film, I, uh, I, so I begin to really like, uh, uh, you know, get to learn more about Nihonshu. Uh, and uh, Moto is a restaurant in Shinjuku she owned, uh, or she was a manager. So, you know, I told you I met this very, uh, I would say, mania sake. So she introduced, so I, um, I asked her, you know, what would you uh, recommend? And then, so, you know, she in a way guided me. Um, she's like my teacher. She is, you know, she was then in her twenties and uh, young, I think she could have been looked down, meaning people may assume that, oh, you don't know, what do you know? Uh, but then she had such love and uh, uh, on the contrary, she had this love, deep love and the deep, you know, knowledge and understanding of sake. So, and many of the, you know, sake, uh, uh, as a brewer knew, so she visited, uh, so I thought it's nice that she visit all this uh, sake brewer in different places. And uh, also, uh, I wanted to include non-Japanese and uh, Rebecca, I learned of her. And back then, she was actually teaching, uh, she was being a teacher. Uh, she was teaching Japanese. Uh, we'll meet, we met at Starbucks in uh, Ebisu. Uh, and uh, I wanted to have a, uh, a film with female uh, protagonists, and then she introduced me many people. Oh. What about her? This and we weren't really communicating well, and I thought something is not going well. She thought I turned to her advice, but I actually wanted her to be in the film. So she's also a sake lover. And, you know, she she was happy to meet me because she, you know, for her love of sake, to promote sake. So she, it, you know, uh, it was a, a surprise that I offered her. And then last I met Miss Imada. Many, uh, you know, suggest me Miss Imada. But uh, she hasn't really spoken much about herself in interviews. So... Miss Imada, uh, I knew about her sake, but I didn't know her as a person, what kind of person she is. So I was a bit hesitant. Then, um, again, when you're exposed in media, like she, the idea is that you know she wants to sell or introduce her own sake and not her own self. So she's uh, modest. And that is her, uh, you know, uh, yeah, her charm. But then, originally, again, I wanted some drama. Uh, I thought that would be more, you know, uh, that would actually... So I had, again, this motive. Uh, but I was looking for someone with more drama. But then she's still the best, I think, to be depicted. So I asked her eventually. Oh. And as for uh, filming... Because I live in the U.S. normally, so when I visit, in, visit Japan, I spend about two weeks filming. Then in these two weeks, uh, it's winter when you actually do the preparation. Uh, so I visit Japan two, three times and uh, shoot, I get in touch with them. And if it's like an actual brewer, uh, then it's easy. But anyway, I would also visit uh, different locations um, depending on their availability. And then once this sake uh, 
preparation actually making is done i ask are there any events are planned etc and then it was really uh you know it was a bit scattered around so it's not like there's a script well I don't know what viewers would think, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised that, you know, it, it fall into like one piece. It's a, it's a complete film now. Aha, uh -huh. so you edited yourself. So it's like a, the, you know, puzzle, you, you know, you connected pieces together. Yeah, I didn't, because I don't know where, how the story will unfold and um, it will be concluded. So it's a long interview. I spent like an hour or two doing the interview. And this interview, you know, I sort of cut and paste and I thought that's how it's going to be. Uh, and, I, and it's about 90 minutes. Uh, then the scenes that, you know, they were talking and then later I would actually, I thought it's better I go for, lo you know, actually could location and shoot depending on what they're talking about. First, originally it was just, you know, more like a talking head kind of interviews and then i added b-rolls uh later of all these different from different locations so after the first film and it was completed four years uh, later so you, you needed that much time well uh, first film and uh, it took about a year the whole the whole a year to a year and a half but i wasn't constantly working on this film uh, because you know i had to do for the shoot in different locations so um you know it's one full year for sake making like a crops or plants, the, the sake will nurture and, uh, you know, mature and grow. So, you know, in each, each period or each case, you need a particular visual or something impressive, something, um, any, any, in the retrospect, any particular scene that you are happy that you managed to shoot? Well, with my, uh, well, there was this film. Yes, it is about uh, combining, pairing uh, sake and food. So there is uh, Mr. Kimura's uh, sushi Kimura. It's, uh, you know, they serve aged sushi. It's in Futago Tamagawa in Tokyo. So thanks to Marie, uh, because of her, we get to uh, film there. And, uh, yeah, I get to visit the restaurant. Uh, in the first visit, I only did the shooting. I didn't eat any of the food. And I wanted to have close-up of the food, so I visited as a uh, customer. And uh, I filmed sushi. I, you know, I yeah, yeah, made uh, close-up shots. And... And another one, uh, restaurant Le Fer Vessons. Um, it's a high end French restaurant. I was able to introduce this restaurant as well. So, sake, because it's transparent, uh, you know, if you have a close look, there's stickiness, you know, you see this uh, thickness, but it, it looks like water. So, that's the thing with sake. So, com be able to combine with food for me, uh, you know, actually, it added to my satisfaction. It was actually fulfilling uh, to my, yes, uh, uh, in consumption wise, food wise. So, one of the main themes in this film is about pairing uh, sake and food. I would eat it with some, like, a, you know, the, the salted uh, squid ink, uh, the, the, you know, the squid ink marinated one. Um, that's something I eat. I eat with uh, sake. So, what, uh, yeah, Maria is doing, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. So, I would love to visit that place. Um, so, pairing, um, it's through uh, Ms. Chiba, you know, you realize about, you learn about uh, pairing. Yes, pairing. Um, so, Dan Chu's uh, former uh, vice uh, editor in chief, Ms. Kanki, she mentioned that uh, the sake used to be enjoyed by a middle aged man, and like some, you know, like just you have this, you know, I have a little salt, some, something salty that goes with sake, that's enough. But uh, I don't want to just generalize women, but uh, women are more, in a way, selfish in a, in a good way. They eager to you know take on challenges they're more adventurous so there is no like a preconceived uh, idea 
So they were open to、um, different ideas. So, you know, they try and error and they discovered、um, the ways to enjoy sake. So the recent sake、um, actually. There's more acidity, so it goes with food more. It wasn't the case in the past.、Um, when it's, there's acidity, it's considered bad sake, deteriorated sake.、Um, but the sake with acid, and also、uh, alcohol percentage is now lower, so it's closer to wine. So the rival is wine、uh, for sake nowadays. So there are ways to enjoy sake these days, and that is, I think, owing a great deal to、uh, more women. Enjoying, not not connoisseur, but、uh, just a general,、um, yeah, consumer as general consumers. So, you know, I was taken really by surprise with many things. So,、um, things I really wanted to introduce. And when you see things, you know, you want to give a try.、Uh, ham cutlet sand with、uh, doburoku, the,、uh, which is a、uh, home、uh, brewed sake. It was an amazing uh, yeah, um, combination. And I think、uh, sake consumption will be increased cause, because the method, you know, the, the way they enjoy it was rather limited. But you know, now there's so much being presented, introduced. So you know, to understand that there are a variety of ways to enjoy sake, that's the reason why I wanted to in, in feature it in the film.、Um, well, another thing. Say Japanese film, how to introduce Japanese films outside of Japan. Um, say Korean film is very much you know,、uh, universally enjoyed, so it's, there's comparison with Japanese film. So that's what I was made to think、uh, by watching your film. So,、uh, Mr. Konishi, you live in、uh, the US, so for you, you're not, you don't really just have Japanese audience、uh, in mind as, ta- you know, as a target audience. So that, maybe that's where the approach is coming from in filmmaking. Who did you have in mind as your audience when you were making film? Well, something that can be enjoyed by those who have no interest whatsoever in、uh, Japanese sake. So, sake, there are people, if you start you know, from the standpoint that people already know,、uh, familiar with uh, um, Japanese sake, so then you're narrowing, then you know, I'm narrowing the audience. So, I wanted to feature you know, the attractiveness of individuals. Say, if, it's really, if you really feature like an exquisite sake, only you know, sake a connoisseur would、uh, watch it. Another thing is tempo, to have this rhythm. And, and I wanted the film to be entertaining.、Uh, it's not a、you know, teary, sad story. I didn't want to depend on that. So. Um, something empowering, something invigorating. And me personally,、um, I p- depicted these protagonists because they're inspiring. I, I can、uh, respect them. And having met those people,、uh, I'm being invigorated, inspired. And you know, the, the film with good rhythm,、um, you feel somewhat, somewhat cheerful. And you know, additionally, if the audience g e t interested in Japanese sake, that would be a bonus. So now that you made、uh, this film, and in Europe there is wine culture, and、uh, say Japanese sake traveled to Europe, then. Well, with wine, you know, we think about pairing. For example, red meat, white with fish.、Uh, starting from there, you know, you do think about pairing. But in Europe, so, you know, there's culture to begin with. But in Japan, I mean, I mean, ways can open, I suppose, here in Japan with pairing. How do you see that? Yes. So, the culture of sake. It's not like I'm trying to, you know,、uh, spread、um, the sake charm across the world. It was just starting, you know, with my own interest. But I、uh, participated in international film festivals. And when we organized an event, and say, and the brewer I traveled with me,、uh, you know, very happy, they're delighted. Because when you have organized an event in Japan, You know, the people who gather, people who are interested, but、uh, say at the film festival, you, 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 know, you reach people who don't know or have no interest in、uh, sake. And in Japan, I don't know if film is the biggest entertainment, but in the world, film is 
the king of uh, entertainment. So using, you know, uh, this king as a tool, uh, king of entertainment as a tool, I could, you know, spread the charm of uh, sake, which is quite, uh, you know, um, yeah, as, as astonishing. Um, and able to drink sake that you just saw in the film. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, ah, so that's what, you know, the people who were drinking the sake in the film and now uh, the audience can drink it. So that's the difference between regular film and uh, documentary on food or something, something that you can consume. So you have uh, done like promotion with uh, non-Japanese media? Yes, uh, in Udine, in Italy, I participated in a uh, film festival, and there I, yes, received many interviews. I, I was uh, asked to do many interviews, and before that it was San Sebastian. There also I was being interviewed. Yeah, I mean, there are people out there who are interested in food, um, so they very much, yes, enjoy the film. Sure, yeah, as the theme. So the film can be, um, you know, how it, it, it creates the, the ripple. So there can be conversation um, really, after, you know, beyond the film. That's right. So uh, Mizimada uh, says so she selected as a uh, one of uh, 100 women, uh, BBC's uh, 100 women. She was selected last year or year before. And she, I suppose it's maybe owing partly uh, to this film. So um, unless film was a big hit, you know, usually that's where it ends. But um, because uh, the film is dealing with food, so it, it's a, you know, has more longevity, you know, even in, in a place where I don't know uh, elsewhere, it's, uh, you know, it's talked about. Yes. And then I depicted people, uh, selected people who, you know, uh, need be more widely recognized and, you know, like Mizimara Sake should be, uh, you know, enjoyed more. And the three women featured, you know, I mean, they can go even further and beyond. And after the films being made, are you in touch with them, even in this pandemic time? Yes, via uh, Messenger, Facebook, yes, I am in touch with them. Okay, this will be the last question. So we have an uh, international audience viewing this film. So, uh, Mr. Konishi, the charm of uh, Japanese sake, uh, would you like to maybe comment on that? Or Japanese sake? Well, someone mentioned that. Uh, there is no conflict. It goes with anything. So, um, so those who uh, watch the film, and you may not be able to get hold of the exact same sake where you live, but um, maybe be adventurous. If you normally drink beer or wine or maybe local uh, liquor, but uh, local alcohol, um, please um, maybe shake off the idea that Japanese sake only goes with Japanese food. So things uh, you eat on a regular basis, you know, try sake with that. And if it works, do spread the words. Sake, embrace people. Sake is not picky. I don't choose the uh, audience that people enjoy. Of course, some goes uh, well than others, but it pretty much goes with anything. So maybe you want to uh, find the best match and let me know. I would love to learn. Thank you very much. Through this film, I, it really gave me a whole new outlook. Uh, yes, and it, the film is really eye-opening for me as well. I like to, um, yeah, go on doing pairing. So thank you very much. Um, yes, so we had a director, Konishi Mirai, uh, from a Kampai Sake Sisters. 
Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for joining this online talk for Cross East Asia Delicious Online Film Festival. The film festival will uh, continue on and it's running till uh, 3rd of February. So please enjoy other films uh, in the lineup as well. Thank you and uh, see you soon. Thank you.